Um, so I've strained my back. I've been doing lots of exercises lately, lots of push-ups. Push-ups. Um, oh, so you feel it up here? Yeah, mostly okay. behind my shoulder blades. It's really In this area? Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me just poke around here. So these are your rhomboids here. Okay. And they're underneath the trapezius, this big wing-shaped one that gives your shoulder its shape. Okay. And if you bring the camera here, what you'll see this side is higher than this side. It has a different bit of an angle here. So right away you know that he's a little kind of twisted that way. Only in the spine, not anywhere else. And so this side is definitely going to be different. This also lifts up a bit higher here. So both of these shoulders have their own unique qualities so it would be at a glance hard to tell which was the one that was giving him a problem because they are quite different so when I palpate in this area Chris mm -hmm. how does that compare with over on this side um, the right side's a lot more tender that's where most of the pain has been coming from as well it's always been okay. on the right hand side but you can feel how something's going this is really developed right here yeah. did you ever do something one-sided like a tennis player or squash player um, no it's all mostly, mostly bilateral yeah were you a skateboarder or a biker um, yeah I mean we bike a lot we used to skateboard a lot well oh, gee Okay, that's really tight, because you'll notice, if I drill there, see how all that will tighten up? So all I have to do, if you get a bit of a long shot there, you'll see that goes like that. When I don't touch, it calms down, and then you go like that. Okay, this side doesn't do that. So I can go like that, and it doesn't have the same jump up quality that that does. So this side is definitely involved, and hopefully by the time we finish, it won't have that. So I've got the coconut oil here, Chris. To... That's great. Right? And where was your last massage? Oh man, I don't. I Wyatt the other night. He gave me a little of a back massage. Okay. He tried, but he didn't succeed, so we had to come okay, in for the Okay, so I'm fixing up Wyatt's job. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so is this your first massage? This is my first real massage. Holy smoke! Yeah. And I've got my little red thumbnail polish on, especially for it. That's yeah. what you get for being a grandmother. <laughs> and I'm with the right person for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So because the large trapezius hooks up here, swings down, gives your shoulder its shape, and then goes into this area, you get the superficial muscles loosened up first. So you work this whole upper shoulder area, and then we'll go drilling underneath with those short little uh, rhomboid ones. And then we'll also get these long uh, basement level muscles called the erector spinae. And on you, they're really well defined. So if you just lift your head a tiny bit, you'll see see that gully there. So the ridge on either side, that's good, Chris, goes right down to there. Those are called erector spinae. They go right up to here, to the base of the skull. And they're keeping his spine erect so that he's standing up tall. And he's really tall anyway. Are you six foot? Yeah, six foot five. Six foot five? Yeah. Holy smoke, then why you're actually tall. Yeah, I'm 6'2". And he's taller. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a span. I'm, I'm, I'm just hitting 4'10 and a half myself. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I really work on these attachments and try and drill away on them, get them to loosen up. And because he mentioned that when he turns his head, he gets some um, indications down one side into this shoulder area. So we really try and get those tent pegs loosened up so they aren't so tightly adhered to the ground of his skull there. So just work away with this fingertip kneading and then come on down the strong upper fibers of the trapezius, really scooping it up. Now you have to get some Epsom salt because I'm going to drill on this back and see if we can get a real difference in one treatment. So what you need to do is kind of get Ainsworth Hot Springs into the bathtub. You guys okay. have a bathtub at home? We do, yeah. Okay, so even though you're very, very tall, yeah. the idea would be to get your 
feet up on the wall and your back under the water okay. and put a whole bunch of Epsom salt, like two large yogurt containers okay. of Epsom salt. What do those do? That'll draw, like just the way salt dries out things, okay. it draws moisture out of your system. That's why it's really good. Even though it's a weekend night, no beer drinking, you just have to drink water okay. to replenish the fluids. And just get this back and forth here. I can't believe it that I've got red nail polish on once in my life when you guys are doing a surprise shoot. Okay, so what we're going to find, I imagine, out here, Chris, yeah. is that this is going to be really tight. And I'm going to do a check and compare with this other side. This ridge that I'm running along here, you can see there is a ridge of Chris's scapula. So I'm going underneath. It's called the infraspinatus and it's hooked up inferior to there. Um, subscapularis is also underneath here and they're just shoulder blade muscles that are famous for hooking up into here. So when he's doing the push-ups, I'll show you here so you don't have to look crisp, but you're going to go like this and you're going to go down and you're going to feel it like in the wrist and the elbow and all the way up, but it's that shoulder that's lifting. So all here, this whole area is going to get it. that kind of strain. It's really, really good for the wrist. But let me just sanitize my hands with the chisel and get back in there. So what I'm going to do is test out Chris's shoulders on this side in those same areas. So how does that side compare, Chris, with this side? So I'm going to do the same stroke here on both. Uh, you know, those are fairly similar. They're similar? Yeah. Okay. Let me know when it starts to get different. What about these ones? These are trigger points. I'll go a bit slower so you don't jump. Uh, still? Still sim yeah. Okay, great. Now there's a trigger point. Well, there's about 10 of them here. Let me know when I hit one. And it'll be a spot that feels like you need a bullet to bite. So usually when people take a look at my size, they go, oh, she's so tiny and puny. So I have to find these little trigger points so that... How am I going to know when you hit it? Uh, you'll know. Okay. It's more sensitive, good question, than other spots. So it'll feel like a spot that... Oh, right there. Right there? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hold on to that spot. I want you to breathe into it. Breathe right into the center of that sensation and let me know when it starts to change. Okay. It'll feel like I've lightened up. And usually it takes two or three deep breaths, and then you'll find a shift. And if you hold on to the trigger point long enough, it dissipates, which means it lets go of the tension in that muscle. And is it still the yeah, same no, level we it, started? It's much better now. Starting to go? Yeah, Let better. me know when it's all gone. One more deep breath. Yeah, That's it feels good. like you almost like that now. Okay. So then I rub it out like this, Wyatt, so I'm not leaving a thumbprint. So I really want to make sure that I'm able to get this erased. Now I know the red nail polish makes it really easy to follow my thumbs, but being a professional, I have to say that this is a grandmother thing, <laughs> that I just did this with my granddaughter. And it's not my usual professional look of thumbs of steel. So Your granddaughter's in town? Nope, this was up in Fort St. John. Oh, nice. So then, you really work so that I don't leave a thumbprint. So, can you still feel where my thumb was? Uh, no, it's almost good. Yeah. Even if you're, and there's one or two more. So let me find another one here. That one. That one. Okay. Same idea. Breathe into it. Let me know when it starts to go. So what I'm doing is practicing on the side that isn't as much of a problem for Chris. And that way, when we go to the other side, good breathing, a little bit deeper. Yep, focus right on the center of the sensation. Same technique that I use with yeah, that's pretty labor nice and delivery. Nice, yeah. Good. Okay, great. Well, you'd be very good having a baby. <laughs> that's the kind of coaching we use. Okay, then I'm going to go over here, find out what kind of trouble we get into. And sometimes on the affected side, there's more of this kind of hypersensitivity. But let me know when I hit the big ones. Anywhere around here? Right there. Right there? Yeah. Okay. And again, breathe, breathe, breathe. And we could do probably five or six on each. Like, there's way more, but we'll just give you an idea of what to do. Now, this is really good for the people that are hands-on with Chris. 
What's your girlfriend's name? Jove. Yeah, Jove, the, these trigger points. That's all you have to do is ask, is this it, is this it? If you're too flat on your thumb, you won't get it. You need to be on the tip. So it is a bit of a nail biter if you have really great fingernails. Just get rid of the thumbnail elegance and you'll be pretty effective. That's all good. Now. Better, yeah, okay. Good. And then I'll erase it. And then I'll just go looking for another one. Let me know when we hit it. Oh, you, oh. Usually there's one under here somewhere, but you thought there was one down here? Yeah, yeah right. Oh. Right there? Yeah, right there. Is that right on it? Um, no, if you're on main, it isn't. Okay. One. Might be hiding. <laughs> yep, sometimes. Oh, right there. Right there? Yeah, okay, yeah. we got it again. Am I right on it? Yeah, you're right on okay. it. Okay, and again, breathe into it. And often by the time we get like to the third or fourth trigger point, it's also called a pressure point, um, they start going faster. So the first one might have taken a little slower on the this breath. This one's really intense. Oh good, okay. And then go right for the middle. And when you concentrate in the middle of the sensation, like don't skitter away from it, it really helps rivet that focus. Slow breathing. And all the way out. A little bit more emphasis on the push out, push out. That's better. Okay, is it starting to go? It is, yeah. It's still hanging in there, yeah. eh? Oh, no, and use your breathing. But that is good. It shows that we do have an indicator that this side is worse than that side. So we've got something going on here. And tell me when we're gone. We're gone. We're gone, okay. And then what I do just to make sure I get a good eraser is I really give it a stretch. There's a long muscle that goes into the back of our armpit like this like this right here and it comes from way down here it's called the latissimus dorsi hooks up here gives you a whole side of your back at shape it really gets developed when people do the butterfly stroke or lat pull downs in the gym and it goes right into that back web of the armpit okay so we're working into the trouble site so we've got rid of the peripheral tension up here in the neck the upper fibers of the trapezius and that whole area there. So now we're going to go looking for trouble and I'm going to do some drill in the rhomboid attachments along here. That's pretty tight right there, eh? Yeah. I'm going to slow it down or he's going to jump off the table. <laughs> so I'm going to do this kind of thing that's more investigative and I can get, uh, you can see him jump. I can get an idea from Chris so I just go really slow so there's not an anticipating of resistance as I'm coming along. I just have to take it really slow and it's kind of like the slower you go you get let in easier. How's that? Feels great. For speed? Okay. Too much pressure? Yep. And for someone that hasn't had a professional massage, here I am, I've got the drill bit out. Like this is not kind of normal wussy kind of spa treatment. This is going for therapeutic pressure. So I've got the whole bicep mechanism down on him there and using the kind of body weight I can to lean into it. How am I doing now? Feels great, yeah. Okay. And now does it ease up more kind of lower mid-back? Um, Is it still pretty tight? Because the whole side feels really tight, Chris. Yeah, it feels tight. Okay. Here we go. And even though this is the home stretch, the thing about tall people, and both Chris and Wyatt are unusually tall, they're over six feet. So this is where these guys have way more back than the rest of us, which means they, they can wave around and mess it up way more than little tiny people like me. So that long back, it's just like a long tall tree has more sway in the wind. You know, there's just more to it to be caught up with the forces that are running by it. So this is where we're going to, there's a square muscle here called the quadratus, which is four-sided lumborum. And you can see just how doing a little bit makes that, if you caught that little flare up there. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching this lower back muscle. I'll go for big general strokes because I'm getting that resistance where his muscles are kicking back on me. So I'm going like this. Ideally I go to the side that isn't as effective and really get it to talk to the side that is a little um, 
apprehensive about what's coming. So I find if you use both sides, they talk to each other. They have a conversation that lets you in better. Very much like stroke recovery that way. If you do both sides, then there is a neurological exchange of information. So if this side, Chris's right side, was really, really untouchable, I would use the left to get me in and be able to confuse, really, the body and sneak in. So this allows there to be a neurological flood of information that the lower back is okay to lean on. And then we go in from a broad stroke to a more specific stroke, with, like with the thumbs only. We're going to see if we can get this to... Yep, that's better. Yep, that's good. Okay, and then I go to a broad stroke. So I'll go picky broad, picky broad, or specific general, specific general. And that way, the system can't build up a resistance to the discomfort. Uh, people can use their thinking power about knowing it's good for them, so they'll show up again for more of that therapeutic pain and discomfort that's going to benefit them in the long run, but feel uncomfortable in the short run. Whereas with animals, if you don't finish where they have absolutely no body memory of thumbprints, there's no way they're going to show up again because their body's going to remember the tough stuff. Okay, so I use a broader in-between stroke of alternate thumb kneading and try and entice this muscle group to let go. So I'm coming up here and there's still a lot of hyper reaction. There's still a lot of jump up in this muscle. So what I'll do when I get to the top is I'll go on down what I'll call for purposes here the unaffected side and we'll go and how's that pressure? Uh, you could go even harder if you want. Okay yeah. so when he says harder that means go slower and you'll get more depth and then make sure you're on the tip of your thumbs and is your girlfriend good with her hand like is she a firm gripper is she oh, yeah, very tenant? So oh, plays piano. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Piano players make the best massagers. So it. it'll actually be good information for her own hands. Going up this side, however, you can feel the tension right there. When I go over this part, there's a, a kind of a ropiness right there. And then it disappears, another ropiness there. And oh, there's another kind of crunchy thing there. Mm, I can feel them. Yeah. Did you ever have any basketball injuries or are you coordinated when it comes to sports? Yeah, fairly. I've never had any injuries really. Okay. Cause just because you're tall, everyone thinks basketball. Yeah. But there's a lot of tall people that fall over themselves. They mm -hmm. be deadly on the basketball court. Oh, yeah. That'd be me. That'd be you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you got injuries, it's probably too much time on the computer. Yeah, that would definitely be it. I've been working at the desk a lot lately. Oh yeah, okay. Editing? Yeah, a lot of editing this month. That's good. Yeah. Those are what you call positive problems when you're exactly. young filmmakers. You want the aches and pains, but you definitely, it's good that Wyatt's got good hands on. Because when you got a deadline, it's two in the morning. If you do some pummeling, now what I'm doing here is confusing it, Wyatt, like I'm going back and forth just so I'm creating my own confusion that it can't jump up and resist me. So I'm wanting, even though I'm going slow, I'm wanting to get in at a pretty therapeutic depth here. And that back and forth is my way of encouraging it to not know what's coming next. It also has a therapeutic effect of getting a structure to let go easier. So instead of just poking like that, I'll poke and rock, poke and rock, and it just sets up way more interest. Whoops, right here. It's tight too, eh? Huh. And that's where the thorax is starting to meet the lumbar vertebra. Okay, so now when I'm going up here, if you are doing decibels, like at the very beginning, 
if that was 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. what, how are we doing now? Like, uh, are we coming where, down? Where your thumb is now is still pretty intense. Okay. The, the rest of it's... It's subsiding? It's like a three, yeah. Oh, okay, good. So what we're going to do now is another trigger point. So we want to just breathe. Am I right on it, Chris? Um, yeah, right there. Right yeah. there? Okay, and breathe. Good work. Well, you've been doing more than just a few push-ups. Yeah, lots, lots like, of exercising and then just sitting at the computer all day, yeah. You guys got to get a pool membership. Yeah. <laughs> because if you could swim on your back, that would, I think, enable you to stay this fit. Because you're very fit. You're fitter than than you used to be, right? Yeah, for sure. And we live right by Gyro, too, so that'll, that'll work out well. Okay. That feels much better now, yeah. Breathe again. All the way out. Okay, let's see if there's anything else going on here. Let's see if I can get my thumbprint out of there. Let me know when we hit another one. Right there. Right there? Yeah. Am I right on it? Yeah. Okay. Same thing, breathe into it. Oh, there it's starting to go yeah, now, right? That one went away quick. Yeah, that was a good one. Right over the cliff. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, here we go. Smooth it out. Oh, right there again. That's it? Yeah. We got another one just above it. Good work on the breathing. Yeah, you caught, oh, there, that was good, eh? Good, uh -huh, good, good. Okay, let me know when it's gone, gone. Good. Yeah, that's gone over now. Okay, we'll come down this way with this one. And how are we doing there? Nothing? A um, little bit tender, but not as much pain. Okay, let me know when we get a good one. And there. No. Nope. Maybe a little bit lower. There. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh. it's not too bad though. Yeah, okay. right, right there. Right there? Yeah, that's the spot. Have I got it? Yeah. Okay, I'm right on the tip of my thumb, but that nail's not biting you? No. Okay, and breathe. Nice work. Good, 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 good. Great. Can't believe you guys are filming when I'm post accident. <laughs> like I got lips from hell and red nail polish. That's good. That's good. Okay, when does it go? Yeah, it's going. Feels great. Nice slow breathing. Slow breathing right into it. Good. Is it gone? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes if it doesn't go, what's your girlfriend's name again? Jobe. Jobe. So Jobe, sometimes if that trigger point isn't going, it's because you're not right on it. Like for instance, I'll show you. Let me find another one, see if there's anything lingering here. So Chris, I'm going to go down and just look for something. Sure. And what about in here? That seems kind of crunchy. Is there anything we oh, can yeah, do here? Sure. Should I go out this oh, way? Right there. right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he could say like I'm right on it, right? Yeah. Right okay. There. Let me show you how to get a little. Okay. Am I right on it? Yeah. Okay. Am I off? Yes. Okay, all I did, you, it didn't look like I moved very much, but to get back on it, am I there? Oh yeah, that's intense. So it didn't look like I did much, but it's very subtle, but he can give you feedback. So you always have to ask, am I right on it? Okay. Kind of, if they go, uh, you're not you know, on it. for sure, like it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. But for people that haven't done it, yeah, that's of. just how to, now if I go flat on my thumb, see the difference? Yeah, not as You intense. can't nail it. But if you can go right on the yeah. tip and not have any length of thumbnail, you can really get it so that you can drill through the center. And how are we doing with the breath? Deep, 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 and all the way out. Yep. And again. That's good. Great. Yep. Good breathing. This is one of the top ten, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Feels much better now. Okay, it's going? Yeah. Okay, these are usually the kickers. Like these ones, because you guys are on computers all the time, these ones up here in the top of the trapezius and the upper rhomboids, and then there's this nasty little muscle called the levator scapula. It's going to go from here up to there, and it's got this kind of thing happening in the shoulder like that, but when we had telephones and we used to go like that, it was a real mess. Now, People will still tend to lift for what I call the mouse arm, mouseitis. So people will have more lift. You're right-handed, yeah. and it, it's a classic. And if you look at his shoulders, um, they're because they are different. This one looks like it has more liftability than that. So do you always mouse with your right? Always, yeah. Yeah. So it's good to be bilateral in your mousing. 
like and change your monitor to different places but if anything try and get a left-handed mouse and and then you could because you're in your 20s right yeah 20, 20? Yeah. okay and you want to make film until you're forever Hopefully, so yeah <laughs> and you know even though i think we'll get voice command and all that stuff for the next few years you really want to make sure that these shoulders are going to be there and not age early because people are aging early really really aggressively because mm -hmm. of um, coffee and computers <laughs> mm -hmm. the two c's because the coffee just leaches the caffeine sh straight out of your system now isn't there one of you that doesn't drink coffee that's chris, chris? i drink a lot okay so you make up for it but it's the best th oh if you can go to decaf wyatt that would even do it. It's hard, yeah, yeah. isn't it? That's such a great uh, addiction to have. But if, don't go anywhere near Coca-Cola or chocolate or coffee, Chris, and you'll keep your calcium. But this is something that you can just work away on forever. This, this whole shoulder mechanism here is what sets up um, what's going on here. So what I want you to do now, Chris, because we've been terrorizing the shoulder for a while yeah. is um, when I finish this long stroke I want you to be able to wiggle around and basically try and recreate the stiffness uncomfortableness or pain you were having in that shoulder so you want to just lift and wiggle and move your oh yeah it's almost completely gone I can't okay. even feel it so where, if you were going to feel it, where yeah. would it be? It was kind of right behind the right shoulder. Okay, part. that, okay. So I'm going to show you something that um, you could go to right away, but I always suggest that people loosen it up. So see if that'll drop your elbow. Just let, okay. So he isn't very floppy at all. Because no, this is the most inflexible um, shoulder I've ever seen. <laughs> so you can see it wing up. Okay, so I got a grip under here with my hand and let the elbow drop as much as you can. So what that does, and I'm supporting it like this with my arm, is it wings up this scapular border, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under. So I'm gonna just, and drop the whole arm, Chris, I'm just gonna wiggle it, there it goes. So it gets me underneath there, and I can get underneath. You wanna make sure you don't have a real ridgy there in your nail and get underneath and again I use the wiggle technique and I can also leave her up and drop your arm Chris and leave her down okay so I can go with this and if you get that angle wide you'll see how far I can go under so I'm gonna lift this back drop your elbow Chris yeah. as soon as he drops his elbow this will wing out more and I can get right underneath there and then I just keep going like that and I'll give it another go with this hand with that same idea. So just let that go floppy. And sometimes this will slide right off. Okay. And you really want the angle to stay, but don't try and control it. Just okay. let it mess up. Okay, so just let that drop. And here we go. We're going underneath right around. How's that? Oh, really good. Okay, good. So you kind of chip away at the upper layers of tension. And then this is really accessible. Now watch this one. If I let go, this will um, sit itself. But if I lift this up and let it drop out. Now again, Chris, let this drop out. So then I can maneuver this whole thing and this with my other hand and work away here. So I'm, I'm big on the wiggle technique because I'm a tiny person and I need to be able to get in with every door open. So I use this kind of thing as one of my key ideas for and drop your elbow. So because he's up against my arm here, I can feel him lift and you know, not so much be helping me out, but it's just a natural resistance. So there's thumb stuff, there's this kind of thing getting under, and then you can use this is actually broader. It sounds really tough like we're fisting it but you can see it's a broader stroke underneath there and then there's just kind of the pokey so I'm gonna give Chris a repertoire okay this is the thumb pokey stuff and this is the angle with my fingers underneath slide it along and I got the thumb coming there if I'm coming up I can do it and again I can wiggle them 
but I'm doing everything I can to get underneath. Just let your elbow drop, Chris. Thank you. And work in there. And then we'll really go for it. We'll wiggle, 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 and drill, drill, drill. And these are like what you call frictioning. And then like this. And then let's go again. It's a bit of a workout. And underneath, and just let the whole scapular move. And then I'm going to move it around. So I'm going to let it move while I'm massaging. And move it back while I'm massaging. So the whole thing is moving. There we go. Okay. Okie dokie. And then, let's see how you do. You can put your arm down now, Chris, and wiggle that around. Ooh, that was intense. Yeah, that was, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry, you had the major Sutherland special. Oh, no, sure. And I'm using this stuff. It's a um, carminative lotion. Any of these kind of Tiger Balm Chinese uh, lotions are really good with the peppermint and eucalyptus. And I put this on so that he um, can still keep it cooking. And it means he'll leave a bit of a tailwind. Peppermint, it'll open up everyone else's sinuses who's mm -hmm. in the row behind you. But that way, this will just keep on going. And with an Epsom salt bath and a soak, then that should keep all that activity moving out so that you want to drink as much water as you can. Okay. Soak as much as you can in order to sweat it out. Mm -hmm. There you go. Then I use this. It's a very, very light reflex stroking. And it gets rid of the drill pattern. And light, light, light. And uh, my daughter, when I work on her sports injuries, says, use the magic fingers, this intermittent. And again, it's a superficial um, confusion. So that a light touch the body will respond to much more of an interesting fashion than a firm touch. So you do this light reflex stroking and it should erase it so that Chris isn't going to go, oh, I can tell where her thumb was or where we did those trigger points. There you go. Now you can do all that kind of work and actually create a headache. So we're just working here to make sure we have headache insurance prevention 101. You're going to get a bunch of hair on your head well, to warn you. <laughs> probably going to give even of a more Kootenai hairdo than you had coming in. <laughs> there you go. But it's really good to always do that when you work on someone's head, neck, shoulders. Um, it's good to do this and make sure they don't get a what I call tension releasing headache. Then if you do have people with headaches, make sure you work the head, neck and shoulders first because often that's where the jam up is and then often the pressure in the head is relieved. But there's nothing like the scalp for getting everything loosened up, kind of taking the lid off the garbage can here and airing it out. So nothing wussy we'll like this. Get a claw-like grip, grip onto those muscles and move them. There you go. Perfect. And you need to take at least 10 deep breaths before you get up. And I'll just attend to my next patient up here and start his shoulders. And you can give yourself a good stretch. So that's how you would do a pretty serious treatment of uh, shoulder soreness and uh, back achiness. So how does that feel? Amazing. I feel like I'm 20 pounds lighter. My shoulders feel weightless. Oh good. Yeah. And do you have any spots that you can tell my thumbs were digging in? No. The reflex oh, okay. stroking. It works. Made it all disappear. Yeah, okay. So hot soak. Hot soak, Epsom salts. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're welcome.